In JavaScript, variables allow us to store and manipulate data. Think of a variable as a labeled box where you can keep different types of information. Declaring a variable is like choosing and labeling a box, and assignment is like putting contents inside that box. For example, if you want to store a name, we can use a variable to hold it and use it later in our program. JavaScript has three ways to declare variables, var, let, and const. Var is the old way and has some issues, so we usually avoid it. Modern JavaScript follows a standard called ECMAScript or ES, which introduced let and const for better variable handling. You don't need to know much about var and ECMAScript in a crash course, so that's enough for now. Let is great for variables that change, and const is for values that should stay the same. For example, we use let for changing value like a city name, and const for a constant like the value of pi. Now, assuming you have Node.js and Visual Studio Code set up on your machine, let's verify everything is properly set up and then practice. So here I am in command prompt of Windows in a folder I created to contain JavaScript files we would be creating in this course. But first, we are going to issue two commands to verify proper installation of Node.js and Visual Studio Code by inspecting installation version. So first, let's check Node version. So Node version 20.13.1 is installed on my machine. And if yours don't match, don't worry, it's OK. And next, I'm going to inspect if Visual Studio Code is properly installed and code is a shortcut for Visual Studio Code and also got a correct response. So this verifies that Node and Visual Studio Code are properly set up and are ready to use. To start coding, you can create a folder for your JavaScript files, open Visual Studio Code like I did, and use file open folder to load the folder for editing. So here we are. Let's start creating a new file, and let's call it variables.js, and let's add some code to it. So let's start with the wrong example var age equal to 25. And the reason I keep bringing var up is that most old code and tutorials have been written with it, so you should at least know what to avoid going forward. All right, let's do a proper start. So let's start with let, and I'm going to say let city equal to uh, New York. Okay, the semicolon is not necessary, but recommended in JavaScript. Uh, so uh, you can use it, not use it, it's it's not going to cause any error. So we can redefine the city because we use let. So I can easily say city equal to London, and it's not going to cause any issue. Let's go ahead to const and see the difference. So I say const pi equal to 3.14, and again, I if I try to say pi equal to 3.15. It's not saying anything at the moment, but at runtime, this is going to result in an error. So what are we waiting for? Let's give it a quick try. So I'm going to save this file using Control S. Then I'm going to go to View menu and select Terminal, which is going to bring up a command prompt type thing over here in Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to execute this file using Node by typing node and giving the file name, which is variables.js, and pressing enter. And we immediately see a type error assignment to constant variable, just as we expected. So let's get rid of this. Save the file again. Give the same command, which you can now give using up, up arrow key. And nothing happened. The file executed successfully. And nothing was logged in the console because uh, we were not logging anything, but we could not see value of any variable either. So a better approach is to go over here and select JavaScript debug terminal. This feature allows you to put a breakpoint in Visual Studio Code Editor by clicking over here on the sidebar. And now if I select the same command, it's going to stop the execution of JavaScript at this stage. And now we have multiple ways of inspecting the value of variables. So if I hover my mouse over it, it say it shows me value of 25 assigned to variable age. But if I hover over city, it's still undefined because this line hasn't executed yet. And to execute it, I'm going to press this step over button or press F10. And now if I inspect city, 
we can see New York. We are also seeing value of these variables on variables panel on the left, which opens up in this play button, run and debug uh, button. So now if I execute further using F10, city equal to London and by which is still undefined would get assigned 3.14, but the that was the last statement, so the execution finished. So congratulations, you just wrote your first JavaScript file, executed and learned to debug it as well in Visual Studio Code. JavaScript has different types of data we can store in variables. The most common ones are strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, objects, undefined, and null. For example, a name is stored as a string, and age as a number, and list of hobbies as an array. Note in JavaScript, variables do not have pre-assigned types. The type of a variable is determined by its value at runtime. This can lead to all sort of issues, and hence TypeScript language access to address that problem. I have modified the file we were editing earlier to include examples of variable data types. For example, name would be a string type, age would be a number, is married would be a boolean, address would be an object, ninth planet would be undefined since we kicked Pluto out, and zoo guest in unicorn enclosure would be null because we are not seeing the guest anytime soon. So next we have two categories of data types, primitive and reference types. Primitive types like numbers, strings, and booleans are stored directly in memory, and when assigned to another variable, a copy is made. I'll demonstrate in an example and that would make sense. Reference type, on the other hand, like objects and arrays, store a reference in memory for the value. Means changes to one variable also affects the other variable. For example, if we assign a number to another variable, the original value remains unchanged. But if we assign an object to another variable, modifying one will also change the other. Okay, I paused the recording and came up with this block to demonstrate primitive versus reference type. So here I assigned your age to age and your address to address, and then I modified the values of both age and address.city from New York to London. So let's execute it and see what we get. So I'm just going to go and do this without debugging. Right, so if we come back here and see when your age is signed the value of age, it gets a separate copy of the number 25. Since numbers are primitive types, any future changes to age do not affect your age. That's why even after updating age to 30, your age still holds 25. However, your address is assigned address, which is an object. Instead of copying the object itself, JavaScript copies are referenced to the same memory location. This means both address and your address point to the same object in memory. So when address.city is changed to London, the change is reflected in both address and your address. This demonstrates the key difference. Primitives are copied by value, while objects are copied by reference. Same holds true for arrays, function, maps, sets, and more which you're gonna learn later on. So next I have to introduce you to type of demo and which I have typed in interest of time. So type of operator used before any variable name is going to give out its type. Rather than explaining, let me give you a quick demo. So here you can see it wrote out a bunch of console logs and console log prints everything to the command prompt or the console that we are running it in. So the type of my name is string, age is number, is married is boolean. So uh, whatever type was interpreted, it got printed out on the console. So this is a very useful operator. You can use it in if statements and all sort of scenarios in your real code. Also very helpful when debugging our code. So why and when is it needed? So let's say I assigned age earlier as 25, which is a number, but what if I added double quotes around it? Then the type of age would be determined as a string. So in that case, doing any mathematical operation on age is going to cause problems. So sometimes it becomes necessary to do some type conversions as well in JavaScript. And for that, I have another section, which I'm going to show you now. 
So here's a demo for the type conversion. So here I have replicated the scenario I was describing. I assigned my age a value of double quotes 25. So let's first print out its values and then I'll explain. So you can see it interpreted the type of my age variable as string, not a number. And we want it to be a number. So what do we do? We use a number, which is a predefined function of JavaScript to convert age from string to number. And what is the end result? We are typing it as well. So the type of decimal age is printed out as number. And uh, after that, we can also do the reverse operation, that is change it back to string. And to do that, almost every variable in JavaScript has a built-in toString function, which is going to convert it to a string variable. And why is it there? It's usually for debugging or serialization purposes, details of which are unnecessary at the moment. But do note that toString available on every variable is going to convert the type of variable to a string. And hence, we did exactly that. And the type of age string is printed out as string. I should have added the prefixes. I'm going to do that now. All right, so I just paused and did. So here you can see the type. So this finally brings us to the end of the variable section. Uh, just a recap and best practices. You always use let for variables that change. Use const for values that shouldn't change. Name variables clearly and descriptively. And be careful with type conversions. And now you know how to do type conversions. All right, now that you know variables and data types, let's move on to operators and expressions that you can apply on them.